let's talk about the amazing, incredible month of May. My name is Stephanie. This is Lindy Stitches, where I talk about cross stitch. You can find my personal cross stitch designs at lindystitches.com. Not going to talk about those today. Today, we're going to dig through my stash and decide, or try to decide, the things that I would like to start in May. Now, if you don't know what stitch mania is, I will take less than 20 seconds, hopefully, to explain it. Stitch mania is basically where cross stitchers around the world start a bunch of projects in May. It started in 2015 with a smaller group of stitchers who started 15 things in the month of May, and people do different takes on it, but basically you start things. Now, I am of the disposition where starting anything over four or five things in one month would literally drive me crazy and make me insane. And so Olivia B and I, for the last few years, have been joking about that we're participating in Stitch Sania, where you don't start things in May. If you're not watching Olivia B, you need to be, so I will link her down below. But I alluded to this in one of my last floss tube updates that I would like to do Stitch Sania. Now last year I tried this different method out and um, I would like to trademark it Stitch Sania. I hope Olivia doesn't mind. Basically you pick a project that you want to see significant progress on and during the you, you uh, divide it up into uh, what you would like to accomplish each week in May. Last year I chose Bag Ladies by Dimensions and I decided I wanted to, you know, they're all cats in bags. I wanted to do a bag with a cat in it each week. And if you meet your benchmark of the progress that you wanted to make, then on the weekend you get to have a new start. Now last year May had five weeks and so I was allowed five new starts. This year, May sort of has four weeks because the fifth week is kind of a stubby week on the top and a stubby week on the bottom. So I'm going to say that May has four weeks. You can decide that it has six weeks if you want. Whatever. Do whatever you want. But the reason I like this, it kind of combines both sides of my personality. I do like starting things, but at a decent pace, not one after another. And it's very motivating to get through that old whip that you'd like to see progress on. So, my plan for this video is to show you the things that I've definitely chosen, and then we're going to go through some of my stash and maybe wheedle down some other possible starts. But first, I need to do a couple of special shout-outs. The first person I would like to shout-out is Aiden. Aiden, my ex-neighbor who moved away. How old are you, Aiden? 11 or 12 now? Aiden found my YouTube channel and started serial commenting on all of my previous videos. Not all. A lot. Aiden, I love you, man. I miss you. And yes, I will work on knitting an entire picture of my whole family, as per your suggestion. I would also like to shout out my brother-in-law, Ralph, who found my channel and why he wants to watch these videos. I don't know, maybe he gets to the bottom of the YouTube barrel and then he's like, I think I'll watch stuff. So Rolf said that my new tagline should be a la Bob Ross, every day is a good day when you stitch. And he said he would lose it if I said that. So. Those are out of the way now. So if you'd like to stay sane with us, by us I guess at this point it'd just be me and my cat. If you would like to stay sane and participate in Stitch Sania, make sure you hashtag your Instagram post Stitch Sania and I will write that, write that on the screen so that you know how to spell it. I would love to see what projects you are planning on starting and what your whip your cranking away on is. That was really bad grammar. 
I am going to do two giveaways, one of which is centered around this video. So if you put in your comment your advice for my two other starts, so I showed you my two for sures, I'm going to show you some stash and my thoughts on the two optional starts. If you give me some advice, I will know that you want to be entered to do the giveaway for this video, which is going to be a Lindy Stitches pattern of your choice. And if you choose a Lindy Stitches pattern that goes with some palms or trim in my shop, I will send those along as well. I will send you some goodies. So um, don't say the word giveaway, but give me some advice on what my two other starts should be. And I will know that you're interested in that. The other giveaway will be specifically about Lindy Stitches. If you start one of my projects in the month of May, whether you're doing Mania or Sania, I really don't care. But if you start one of my patterns, hey, give me a shout out and let me know. If you would hashtag those Lindy Stitches Stitch Sania, I am going to be giving away a $20 Etsy gift card. You can use it at any Etsy site or seller. And um, I will draw from that hashtag on Instagram. I will put it on the screen. You have to photograph your Lindy Stitches start during the month of May. And that's it. I will draw from those people and make sure I contact the winner and put it in my Instagram stories for accountability so I'm not just blah blah blah. I do give these things away. I'm not the best at um, like re-announcing who the winners were but I do always go back and contact the winners and make sure they know that they won. The winners are winning and what else can I say? So first up, what is my big monogamous during the week project going to be in the month of May. I've decided I need to finish beating my mushroom and fern chatelaine. So let's take a real quick look at that. I just showed it to you. It's on scroll rods and I'm not going to unroll it. But um, basically I've beaded this bottom third of it so far and I need to be the top two-thirds so I'm not sure how I'm going to divide it up yet but I kind of want to challenge myself but on the other hand I find beading not so enjoyable so I don't want to burn myself out but I do want to finish it but I don't but I wish that someone would finish it for me <sighs> this is what we're going to be focusing on in May and I'm excited just basically to be done. <laughs> so beating my Chatelaine is going to be my goal and I'm not sure that I'm going to get through the whole thing. We shall see. I might um, catch it up to a better possibility of finishing the whole thing uh, during the month of April but that's what we're going to be focusing on. So let's talk about the two starts that I definitely want to make that I'm super excited about here they are. Number one is by Exemplar Dames. This was a gift from my friend Janine McGowan. This is called Dames Boarding School. And this is always my first step in starting something is writing down what size it is on various counts before I even dig through my fabric stash. So even if I I have a lot of patterns with this information on it just because I've thought about starting it and whether I did or not. The post-it is useful. So foggy picture but this is what it looks like. It's funky birds and houses and I am planning on doing this like as a t as a tribute to our years of homeschooling because I thought those were over but jokes on me. Uh, <laughs> kids are home now. Um, I can't wait to start this. So I've pulled the floss and what fabric I would like to go with because I've wanted to start this for quite some time, basically the day I got it. Oh, but first, did you know that I am featured on the back of it? Right here. It's an exact representation of me and my cat, Walter, that looks exactly like Walter 
and exactly like me. So I had to start it. This isn't too big. It's 179 by 198. I am planning on stitching it on this piece of 32 count Heroic by Picture This Plus. And Heroic, Heroic is just a neutral tan with like pink and blue splotches that I think will complement the piece really nicely. There's always a more saturated side. And sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. Now here's the floss. It is all week's dye works. And I'm not totally sure that the floss is going to fly. I might change it. Some of the colors look significantly different than the cover image, which funnily enough, um, it says on the back. Now I can't find it. Um, basically, uh, the, oh, the color photo may vary slightly from the graph. Always follow the graph and not the photo. We always want to follow the photo. Like, why wouldn't we want to follow the photo? I feel like if you just follow the graph when it's like really, really different, then you're just like stitching a mystery sampler. Anyway, so that's Dame's Boarding School. Very excited about this one. The second is a piece I got from Market, and I've been going on and on about it because I love it, and it's beautiful, and it was one of my top two picks from Market. It is the Blue Flowers Huckleberry Farm. Now, I searched high and low and in between for some 36 count shale, and it is nowhere to be found on the green earth, and so I had to go digging through my stash, and I have have a nice selection however I don't have I am not a huge purple person shale I have charted on actually two or three times so I've used up all of my shale and I don't have any purple alternatives and so call me crazy but I'm gonna stitch Huckleberry Farm on picture this plus haunted which is a huge stretch for me because this is so different than the photo. I mean, it's going to look completely, it's going to look like its own piece because the things that pop on the shale might not necessarily pop on the haunted and vice versa. So what I did, I haven't pulled all of the floss, but I have pulled a significant amount of it. And I've been kind of trying to make a mix and use up some stuff that I need to use up which I know doesn't sound very clear but I've been kind of matching Janine's suggestions um, just for an example uh, the leaves are a DMC and I have decided I'm gonna use this green with Envy by General Art so yeah pulling her suggestions and then seeing you know do I want to use up a different floss that's the same color, etc. And that looks way brighter than it actually is, but I think Huckleberry Farm is going to look amazing on Haunted. I think it's going to look amazing. Very excited about this start. So I have made a pile. I went through all of my stash and just made a pile of all of my kits that I have, or at least most of them, because kits are easy to start. And then any pattern that was like, yeah, I would, sure. Mm -hmm. So let's go through those and I will give you my thoughts. First up, I have, what is this called? I don't know. Winter Wreath by Riolis. Um, it's a Christmas wreath. I do love the colors. I think this is a gorgeous project. I've seen it finished many times. Hmm. Goes in the maybe, maybe pile. Christine at Calico Stitcher. I will write it on the screen if I'm wrong about her floss tube name. 
uh, was kind enough to pass on the pattern for winter geese. This is an out of print dimensions kit. I think it's gorgeous. I would love to stitch this. Not sure if, hmm, I think this is going in maybe as well because it's gorgeous. I've been watching a lot of Christine, to be honest. She's making videos about her succulent garden gardening, and I don't know why, but I find it fascinating. I can't get enough of the succulent gardening, gardening videos from Christine. Maybe. Was gifted this. This is an out of print Dimensions Gold Collection Roadster Santa. I definitely want to stitch this one day, but this is going in the not yet pile because I don't, I'm not feeling the snow and the winter stitching right now. I, I just not, but I love this because it's hilarious. Maybe. Okay, I feel like I've had this kit forever. It hasn't been forever, but it has been quite a while. <laughs> this is in such crusty condition. This is Cowboy Cats. Obviously, I don't know why everyone isn't stitching this. This is Cowboy Cats by Creative Accents. I think it was also released in like a different brand or form. I think this, this is actually Dimensions, but that is wonderful. I burnt myself out with bag ladies, and so Cowboy Cats is going in the not yet pile. Not yet with the Cowboy Cats. There's no theme, right? Just a bunch of cat kits. This is a Charles Wasaki print uh, called Tired Kitty, and it's adorable. It's mostly brown, like this, this is not, this color palette does not excite me at all, especially because I just finished stitching a fall model for my Lindy Stitches patterns to come. And this is what I was stitching with, so I'm not sure that I'm interested in starting this. Um, it doesn't have the thread count on the front, but it ends up being 11 by 11. So it's not huge, but it is a lot of confetti stitching, I'm sure. I'm actually putting together a cat's puzzle by Charles Wasaki right now. So if you've always wanted to, here's a tip, a tip from me, from one crazy cat person to another, if that's what you happen to be, if you've always admired the Charles Wasaki Dimensions kits, but you're like, I would never stitch that in my entire life, or it's out of print and it costs $500 on eBay, there's puzzles of all of them, and they are very satisfying. All right, I've wanted to start this pattern for some time too. This was in the Stitch Mania video that I made years ago when I was like, hey, I think I'll do Stitch Mania, and then I, no I didn't end up doing it. <laughs> I love this. I think this is a strong contender because how often can you look at something and want to start it? I think this is fantastic. This is called what? I don't know. It's in the January, February, year unknown because it's ripped off. I don't know. January, February, 1989, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Cover piece is kind of cute. And I have no idea what it's called. I don't see the title, but we'll just say it's called what even are these? Quail? Oh, there's the chart. I'm doing great at this. Quail. Funky quail. That is going in the strong contenders pile. Another start that I've had kitted up forever and never started. 
This is from Leisure Arts, August 1994. Derpy Bunny, that's what we'll call this one. Derpy Bunny. I would love to stitch this. And also, I'm more drawn to the pieces that have more dimension because most of the projects I'm working on right now are a lot of motif stitching, which is great, but when I switch projects, I'm kind of switching because I want a different style of stitching, not necessarily just because I'm tired of the piece, if that makes any sense. So, ooh, could stitch this on a blanket. Derpy Bunny. It's actually called Close Encounter. I'm going to put that in the Strong Contenders pile. Moving on. I've had this bookmarked forever, and I don't know that I will be able to show you a picture of the finished piece, but it is in the 2017 Margaret Sherry Stitcher's Diary. You can pick these up on eBay. There is a pattern for each month, and I absolutely adore September's pattern. I do have a finished picture. It is this adorable little mouse up at a desk, and I just love it so much because of his little hands and how big that pen is. So cute. I actually stitched October a couple, a few years ago. Adorable. There's a lot of really cute small patterns in this book. I am going to put that in the Strong Contender pile. So, so far we have three things in the Strong Contender pile. I've had this kitted up for a few months, so nothing serious, but it's here and ready to start. I have the fabric all picked out. This is Le Paulette, a French pincushion by Blackbird Designs, and I was mostly thinking of stitching this for a retreat small swap with StitchCon in mind. I'm kidding. I'm getting scared that StitchCon won't happen, so I don't know how much motivation I have to stitch the small, but I just have some 32, some red floss and 32 count stone gray Lugana pulled for that because I felt like it kind of looked like the linen that they used. I just think that's really, really sweet, and I love the color blocks on the bottom. Should I make a, you should probably start it, regardless of how you feel, pile. I don't know, I'll put it in the strong contenders. Okay, we are now uh, into just the patterns, not kitted up, not ready to go. Shamrock Bunnies by Lucy Beam Love and Stitches. I love this, I love their red eyeballs. I actually in real life don't like when bunnies have red eyeballs, but I think this is hilarious. I can't stitch that for a June giveaway, can I? Probably not. Probably not. Going in the maybe pile. Okay, here's a freebie from Lottie Da. I picked this up from StitchCon. Keepsakes. <laughs> Keepsakes in Ohio. And so I suppose if you wanted it, you could call Keepsakes and make an order. But this is from Lottie Da, and it's called Plant Seeds. And it says, Plant, Se Plant Seeds and Sing Songs. And I just think it's a lovely little pattern that would be a great start, <sighs> considering the times. Plant Seeds and Sing Songs. I think that's adorable. This is a new stash acquisition. Heartstring Samplery's Brown Bird Biscornu is adorable and I love it. It's 101 by 101 for each side. Which isn't the smallest thing, is it, Beth? Because that's technically 
a lot of stitching, but it's really, really pretty. So I might have to make it. Shamrock Bunnies, Lottie Dot, and Heartstring Samplery, all strong contenders. Rooster by Lucy Beam Love and Stitches. I love funky birds. Look at his droopy tail and his wacky hair and his wacky feet. There's like every part of this rooster is wacky and I love it. This is a small stitch, 54 by 60, so very doable. But things like this, like I'd love to give this away. I'm not sure how many people would like, like, oh, I'm so glad you stitched this wacky rooster for me. Like, I love it. It's kind of like the clown that Beth gave me. I love it. It's my love language, but people are like, what in the world? Strong contender. Ink Circles After the Roses. I have feels about this piece. I love it so much. And I'm going to put it in the maybe pile. Because the first two pieces I picked as sure starts are kind of on the large side. I don't want to overwhelm myself. Although I did put a bunch of bigger stuff in here, didn't I? No. I think all the strong contenders are smaller for that reason because I feel like I need to have a couple small starts that I know I can finish. I could do the pin cushion. I could just do the pin cushion. I'm putting it in the maybe pile. Oh, I love this pattern. This is Folk House by Not Forgotten Farm. It's adorable. It's okay. I don't know if this is one of her older patterns, but it does drive me crazy that the stitch count is not on the outside where I can see it. It is one of her older patterns. I love this dearly. I might start it because even if it's on the small, on the larger side, it's mostly white space and that big roof and those big fat cats. So I think this could be, this is a strong contender because I love this so much. So the chart looks like it's 150 by 140. Okay, am I the only one that gets confused by this? I'll just show you a corner. Um, when a chart has like extra stitches on the side that always confuses me because I'm like, is that in the stitch count? And if it is in the stitch count, why is it in the stitch count? Because it's just empty space. And I'm pretty sure all those empty stitches are in the empty space because there's empty space on the bottom too. It's not like there's a bottom motif that came over and filled it. You know what I'm saying? I always get confused by that. And I'm not complaining about the chart because I'm sure it's fine. It's just weird things my brain gets thrown off by. Folk House is a strong contender. Sheep May Safely Graze. I picked this up in the fall on my vacation at Dixie Darlin because the sheep stared me down. It was a model. It's adorable. It has all these eyelet stitches done in wool and I love it so much. I would love to start this, but I would have to order fabric because I, I really liked the fabric color, which doesn't, it, it's more of an amber, I don't know how to describe it. The model was done on the recommended fabric and it looked even better than this photo. So I'm going to put that in the maybe pile. And that is every, nope, one more. I have the PDF for this. This is Gera, and it's just three little sampler motifs, and I had a friend in mind when I bought this, and then I never got around to stitching it. So that has to go in the strong contender pile. <sighs> that was a lot. Let's go through it again. All right, I went through all of my contenders, and I'm still like, I don't know. 
I don't know what I want to do. And so I've narrowed it down, but I still feel like I'm still looking through those other piles of rejects. I'm like, uh, I love you all. And so you pick any two that I've shown you. They don't have to be in my strong contenders, but here are my strong contenders. The Margaret Sherry Mouse, which by the way, let me just show you the November pattern because the puppy, he fell asleep writing a letter. That's the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Okay, so Margaret Sherry Mouse, Folk House, 1975 Quail, Derpy Bunny, and the responsibility start, Le Polet by Blackbird Designs. Those are my narrowed down choices. I don't know what will happen. I might get a wild hair and start something I haven't even shown you. You never know. I would love to see what you would like to do, either for Stitch Mania or Stitch Sania. Remember, if you start something Lindy Stitches, you'll be entered into a $20 Etsy gift card drawing. Use the hashtag Lindy Stitches Stitch Sania so that I can see all of your entries, if you will. Do that on Instagram. I'm not necessarily going to see it if you do it on Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, the Lindy Stitches Facebook group is having a contest and it has nothing to do with stitching and everything to do with being artistic in this strange time. If you like birds, you might want to go check it out because it's super fun and there will be prizes and fun and fun. Fun. I hope you had fun here today. I hope you go thumbing through your own stash and have a good time thinking about all your lovely things. Hang in there, friends. It was so good to be with you. Talk to you later. Bye.